Now you probably found this video because you're looking to make some drum and bass on this machine. And I will say it does a really cool job because my whole last album that I released is all done with the poly and tracker and it does offer us a lot of cool things so i thought let's make a tutorial we're going to go over how to make some really cool drum grooves and then make a really interesting bass line talk about some invisible hand stuff that we can do and some nice flavor that we can add on the top to make our track sound really cool so if you find anything useful in this video definitely give it a thumbs up and let me know because that tells the algorithm to point it to other people and yeah let's get straight into it <laughs> Alright, I got the poly and tracker loaded. I have a fresh project ready to go and I'm going to start loading some samples and being 1.6 we got access to some fancy things and this is something I've been experimenting with is creating some like drum machine instruments. So all our drums are just contained in one instrument but for the tutorial I thought we'll stick with the tutorial sample pack that I built which you can find on the internet and I'll leave a link uh, but I'm just going to pick percussion but those things have been really handy to get really quick into it so I think there's a video there but for the drum and bass I like to make I like to make that more dancey stuff so I'm going to use these big house drums and I'm going to load them up on this channel here so 1 to 12 I just find that really easy to know that they're on my drums and I'm going to start with the kick I always like the kick on the first section here and then I'm going to pick the snare and then I'm going to pick the closed hi-hat and the normal hi-hat. So I use these samples quite a lot so I know which ones are which. And I'm going to add that clap at the end because that's something I might like to use. So going straight into our pattern, we're going to make that one bar of drum and bass. So I am just going to change that to one bar. And yeah, so with drum and bass, you got, uh, it's a four, four, so one, two, three, four. But with drum and bass, we got that kick, snare, but then goes kick, snare. And on the poly and tracker, we can do that by doing a little trick. So I'm going to program in the snare. So we got snare on the three and the four. But with the drum, we have the drum on one. So I'm just in instrument mode. Then I can use these to program in the drums, just so you're following along. And if we put the drum there, it's not really drum and bass. And what we're trying to do is create a syncopated rhythm. So we we put the drum there. Hey, we sort of got that flavor, but it's a bit slow. So if we hold song mode, we can change the tempo here. And I like 160 to 180. I've been liking 165 for myself, so I'm just going to program that in. So if we play that again. Cool, we've got that. Now it's a bit repetitive, so what I might do is I'm just going to duplicate the pattern. So we've got two. But what I want to do is change up this section here. So I like how drum and bass sort of talks to each other. So it's like elements are combining. You have like that call and response. And I like to leave the first part of the that part. But then I'll change up that part in every beat that I do. So this one here. What I can do is like some ways I like to change it up is I'll move the drum position. So if I put it there and just play from here, that's something different. That sounds interesting. You could also leave it out. So this is good for like an ending part. Instead of having a drum, we change it to a snare. So if we do something like that, something different again we could add some ghost notes which we'll get into a bit later but this is a really nice way to start creating some type of flavor so what I might do is that and then I'm just going to duplicate the pattern again so that gives me four bars of what's going on so I might change this one up here so I could do that and then that's normal and then I might leave that and then Maybe I add a snare there. I like that. So yeah, experiment as much as you want to create those sort of starting drums, but there's a little bit extra that we can add. And we've got access to those other sounds. I might use them in other places, but let's talk about adding some like ghost flavor to our mix. 
Now, a ghost note is something that happens in the sound and it's a little bit less, so it's sort of in the background. And what I might do is I'm just going to use that snare and let's say we want to add a ghost hit somewhere like maybe here or here. Uh, we'll try there first. We'll keep it off the beat. Just makes things nicer. And because we're trying to put it in the background, there's a few ways we can do it on the poly and tracker, but lo and behold, I'm going to use the volume command. And then we can use the dial to dial in how much we want. So maybe 10. That's usually a nice number. That's kind of cool, but I don't like it being the first beat. We sort of want to keep that as our flavor. So I'm just going to copy it from the note mode and we'll delete that. We can quickly post in versions that we want. So I just accidentally deleted that. So I might do that. We'll leave, oh, we could add one there and then we can maybe add a ghost a couple of hits there and mm. nice so that's just adding the same snare and just adding a volume command but we can make some of these a bit more impactful so Let's make this one a little bit more impactful. Now we can add that snare again. Whoops. We need to be in this mode. But instead of adding a volume command, let's add a reverse sample playback. So we get that sound. Now if we play that in context, uh, maybe it's a bit too far away. So I'm just going to copy that and paste in there. Cool, so it gives us a little bit more impact into that start. And because I've copied it, I'm just going to plonk that around as well. That might be a good spot for one. Or maybe coming up to maybe this one as well. Cool, so we only got a few. Cool, and some of these ghost notes, like we just got that snare. Let's use the clap for some of them as well. So I've just got them on that button there. And a quick way to do it is we could do something like that. And maybe we would do it one bar, we have the ghost snare, and then another bar, we have the ghost hit um, for the clap. And so we'll leave that one snare and we'll make this one a clap. There already claps. And then we go into the fourth bar, so maybe So we've got a really nice groove there. We've got the drum and snare. Let's add the hi-hats. And this is where I like the third channel. So quickly, uh, shift insert takes you up the top and we're going to select everything. And then we're going to go fill. We're going to go each step. We want to add a constant and we're going to, cause we remember we made uh, the one third channel. So we're going to populate that with all hi-hats and ooh, that came in a bit hot. So what we can do, we use that fill command again and we're going to create a random amount for each step and we're going to adjust the volume. So we're going to create a bit of variance in the impact of that hi-hat. And if we go from two and 38 is usually about max on the level I usually use. So somewhere between those two values, we'll find something and fill. That sounds a lot better. Another thing that I found, now this is a bit more playing with settings, we can shift that start point as well. So we can use the position, we'll create a random amount, and all, cause this is a percent of the sample. So maybe between zero and 20%. So I just bumped it up a bit more. Little bit more studded but I'm just going to lower the volume here just because that's everything and because I had that instrument selected when I went to instrument mode it should already pick that out there so I can use that to sort of dial in how much of the hi-hat I want to come through. Cool! Um, another thing I like to do with my hi-hats just giving it a bit more of a stereo field I'll come in on these off beats and then add a uh, panning so I'm just going to select that and we could like go through and dial in the one we want for each one, but I find it 
easier to press the button that we want here and I'm just going to go like that and just go through and add some level of panning it takes a bit but there we go nice just by the hi-hat cool and yeah I, a lot of this we can start experimenting and trying out different things with your own drum brakes but I'm pretty happy with this. I think we're at the point to start making our bass line. Before I do that, I'm just going to go into the master and I'm going to hit record so I can start naming my track. So we've got a drum, if I can spell, and we, and then we got a hi-hat, and then we're going to do our bass as well. So what I'd like to do at this point, I got my drum beat, I'll come into here and I've just got a bunch of bass sounds ready to go. So if I hit play, I try and I try and listen to sounds that I find that would be useful because we're going to do a little bit of a sound design. And when we're doing drum and bass, we're really dealing with like low end stuff, but we don't want like just a sine wave we can add some harmonics and then we can do some filtery stuff to like take off the top so we can bring elements in and then take elements out when we start really making our bass line. So I'm just going to pick some sounds. I've picked out a couple of sounds that I think we can turn into something cool. So I've got that. And they are a bit noisy and we can bring them down and lower them. I know all these are recorded in C. And they sort of fit well with what I'm trying to do. So we're just going to start tweaking them. But something I like to do is before I start tweaking anything is just punch it in a basic melody line or bass line. And now I'm going to be doing a minor scale and for uh, intensive purposes, you don't need to know a minor scale off the top. We do have a way of using the keys here and we can change this. So if we go pad scale, we can add a minor and we can say our root note is C. And one thing I do like to do is we'll change this to eight. So then it's this part here. So we've got our full minor scale on these notes here, and then we can still jump an octave up. It's not gonna be, um, these keys are taking over and it's a bit weird. So uh, we're gonna apply that. And then if I can, uh, we'll change that to zero. Cool, so we got our minor scale, but do experiment with different types of scales. Like I could try something else, uh, maybe a low cream scale, see how that sounds. Sounds interesting, I might try that one. So we can just start punching things in and I do like to punch in the root chord. So I might go from there, go four parts up. Uh, come back down to, oops, so good, and then we'll go that for that bar, maybe step down, and then we'll jump up higher, so we jumped up four, maybe six, we'll see how that is, and I'm just counting the pads along, the scale's already figured out. That sounds pretty cool. And we can just throw samples at this. So um, instead of um, having these, we could go through and change it to the. So it's kind of cool. We can just throw the samples that we want at it. But I want to do a little bit of sound design because we do have this going away and we can add a. So we've got that filter and we can leave it alone. We could tweak it like that and play it live, but I do like adding a bit of a hidden hand to help me edit this thing. And so if we go into this section here, I want to automate that cutoff and I'm going to automate it over an LFO and say reverse saw. We'll see what it does and we'll leave it at say 14. Um, 
So it's just giving me a bit of a helping hand when I'm writing our lines and we can sort of manipulate that as well. Like if I just go up to the top and we go into our FX, we can use the LFO filter. So I'm just going to jump into there and then we can actually control the, the different LFO lengths as well. So I'm just going to quickly maybe go there and then we can bring that down to two and like if you think this is one and then anything under here is your like really fast LFOs and then anything is above is like steps it's actually really easy to punch in what you want and then we could go one and then back up to two and then we can one four four then maybe three. Cool, so I just played with the settings and had my invisible hands metal with the LFO lengths and these settings here seem to give me I really like that sound and it's like you get that sort of hoover bass sound when you get some like really noisy sounds and then you start using the filter to cut away and then you can bring it back but this is a really good point to be in because we can start injecting other samples in here we can decide to maybe have the samples appear over here <laughs> might do some flipping between that and this bass line here so what I can do is so I've added that bass line and it kind of cuts through a bit too harsh so I'm just going to open that one up and add an LFO uh, low pass to it as well So I've added those elements through and I've just knocked off a bit of that like brightness of it and we just sample it without the drums. Cool and like that was just a really simple bass line that I put together using a little bit of like hidden hands to adjust some of the settings and just play with the filters and something like this is really fun to play with as well. Uh, if I just select that. And yeah, it's like I can start playing with that. I could start duplicating some of these instruments to create other instruments and start playing with different pattern lines. So nice way to get a bass line in, but it's sort of just like, as the name says, it's drum and bass, but there's a few other little elements that we like to add. Like uh, I did have some extra, if I, I might turn these into some sort of high element to sort of come with a nice little bass line there. And I usually use track fire to add some like little earpiece candy. So let's see what I can do with that. What I might do is just add a high. And we'll go into here. I'm just going to create a really plucky sort of sound. So I'm just taking away everything. Cool. And then in effect, just testing out different things. But what I might do is add some delay. And since we're using delay, I might do some editing of that delay. I do want it to sync and probably with all the four beats, so if I... I like that, and say we go, just having to play now, but I've got some that I like with that delay, and then if I go back in here, just dial in how much gets sent to the delay line. So I could be like, this is like melody line, one and
Cool, so it's just one part, but I want to try. Let's see if we can turn that into something as well. Cool, so I've just gone through each of the sounds now. I've got two low sounds and then I've got the two high sounds as well. And all that together we get That's just one part of this song. It's like if we were just to keep playing this, it might get repetitive after a while. So what I might do is I'm just going to go into record mode and I'm going to copy this pattern, come back and go pattern two. And I'm just going to paste the pattern here. So we've got two of the same thing and this is going to be probably a more elevated version of what we had originally. So I might do some changes to the bass line. I'm going to try and ramp up the drums a little bit. Might do some changes to the drum sounds here. So we could add some extra hits. See how that goes. And you don't need to add too much here. It's just giving it a little bit more and maybe do something like that at the end. And then we can change up the snare a little bit. Actually, what we might do is we're going to select everything here and go fill and we might add just a little bit of reverb on this second snare so it gives us something different. So we can do that by going into reverb send and then we're going to pick all the notes so every note we're going to send a little bit of reverb to and we're going to pick a constant value we'll start with a little bit and then we can add more later so if we just solo out so it's giving us a little bit of snare and in context So what I might do is use the jump, maybe six, and then see how that. Compared to. Just gives it a little bit more energy. So we have our baseline here and just a little disclaimer uh, where I said eight make that seven you probably picked up that things weren't seeking up but what that does is it just makes it so our octaves are lined up which makes it easier to jump up and down which is something I like to do in our bass lines is use this as a way to jump up or down so I might add that uh, I'm going to jump that back down to one step so I'm not jumping to a random point maybe something like that and ooh, now nah, we'll do this one. Jump him up and we can go we'll bring in that A again, but we'll drop him down and then back up. Cool. And what I might do is I'm just going to copy this instrument and paste a new one because we want this a little bit warmer than the other one, which we can just do like that and I'm just going to select everything cool so just making some octave jumps and we just edited that Baseline, so we just created a new version in here. So I've got the original baseline and then I have a new one. Definitely name it. I'm just being quick at the moment uh, compared to the original baseline. 
So it's just got a little bit more extra and then if we bring all the elements that we've edited so far. Cool. So this is a really nice point to be in. We've got some elements that we can bounce between. I do like making a nice softer version or like a transition, maybe a pad. So let's make a pad sound to do that. So I'm just going to go into pattern three and I'm probably, whoops, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put pad on 25, which is this row here. And we could find a bass sound. Like that could work, it's a bit gritty. So I'm just going to pick, I don't know what pads I have. They're all chord tones. I probably want something single at the moment. I reckon I could do something with that. And since we've got all our notes here, I know when I play those three there, we're going to get the major and minor scales because it's taken out all the notes that we don't need to hit. So first off, I might follow because I wrote the bass tones in here, I'm just going to copy that line. Actually, instead of copying it from there, because this one is a little bit easier, go and bring that into pattern three, and I'm going to start the pads probably here. And I'm just going to unmute those channels. And I'm just going to use these three channels to write a basic melody line. So I'm just going to remove any clutter, clutter being like notes that don't need to be in there. So cool, so we've got our bass notes and I'm just going to select everything and change. Cool, so we got that sound. It's a bit on the nose, but we're just going to construct our chords around this root note. So I could do something like that, so I'm just keeping that spacing. Oops. So we've got a chord, something basic, but I'm just going to go in and I want to adjust the envelope because it's a bit on the ear. Cool. And I'm just going to put that into the reverb and the left. And I might Instead of getting that wobble, I'm just going to create a forward loop. Cool, so I've taken off a bit of that bite and that weird wobble at the end. So if I play the chord now. Cool, so we've got a sound I can work with and then I'm going to add on top of that note so I can see this note here. And then if we go back in here, I can see the note as well. So I can use that as a guide to punch in some other notes. And so we go back to C. This one's a bit bright, so I might bring that down. Cool, so I've got some pretty chords there and this is going to help us do a bit of a transition and a bit of an intro and I might flip it up a little bit. We'll see how we go, but right now we've got three different patterns. So so we have a few different elements that we can work with and this is where I'll probably start getting into the arrangement side of things. So I'm just going to quickly just add the three slots that we have and then I'm just going to jump up here and go to D because I'm using hexadecimal. Uh, I work in hexadecimal a little bit better but that would be 12. So if I was to go back in here, I'm working on this pattern to start with and then I can leave all these for working files. And so we've got a point, we've got a way we can arrange, I can start adding some data to begin with. 
But if we were to start editing now, we're really going to have a abrupt, like it's pretty much just going to Now, I'm at a point where I want to start making some of the nice transitions and we can have like snare rolls, but I like to use some combinations of other things, mainly making some risers and fallers, and we can do that on the poly end tracker itself. And what I might do is I'm just going to look for sounds and I probably want something that's a little bit of a noise sample, but I just want to grab some... Cool, so same as before, I went through and found a few sounds that I think I could turn into some risers and fallers and some impact sounds. Similar to how we did with the bass, so I've got a few different something like that. Got that, got that. And yeah, there's a few different ways we can muck around with these, but first off, I wanna make a riser and this sound here, if we just play it one shot. What I might do, because it's just a symbol and I need to extend it out through two um, sections, we're going to create a bit of a way to stretch out a noise sample. So I'm just going to go reverse because I want this to rise like that. And then we're going to use the granular synth here and we're going to set the position to halfway. Uh, do something like that. And then what we're going to do is use the granular position, set to an LFO, and then if we set to say 32. Cool. We could also set it to an envelope and get all the timings right, but with uh, the LFO, we do have access to keeping it in sync with our beats. So, I'm just got like that. So if we head back into the sample playback, we can see it's doing a full amount. And the reason why you want it center is because that 50 is applied to negative and positive. I'm just going to do a bit of fiddling. Cool. And I want to change the volume as well. Make that. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that one and we'll show you how to set up in as well. But another part is I wanted to add a few different impact sounds to sort of as a fall off or fade out. So I've got something like this. If I go. It's a bit bright, but what we want to do is I'm going to pretty much just cut it down into nothing. So it's just a blip. And then we can use the reverb to give it a very long tail. And we can increase. So if we were to test out that riser, I usually leave uh, channel eight as where I put my riser. So I'm just going to select him. Cool. So we've got four bars, or I think it's two bars, yep, that the riser will come in and then we can fade it out. But if, like, this is linked to the LFO, which is from the start of play, so if we wanted to make that an actual riser itself, we can select it and we go more, and then we can go render selection, give it a name and riser, and then I'm going to select render and load. And then we've got that. Cool. And because I like to keep my channels organized, so I'm going to copy and bring him down here and paste. And we'll just remove that copy there. Yes. Cool. So I've got some impact sounds. I've got a couple of different melody. <laughs> And we've got our working file here. So we'll go into song mode and we'll start plotting something out. So I'm just going to do that. And what I might do, we'll start, we'll copy these ones across. Now, because I've been working more with making the poly and tracker play with other things, I like to have a bit of an intro. 
So if I was uh, playing live, I could leave it just sitting in this state or I can go back to playing in song mode and then everything will come in. So we've got those elements and might bring in the hi-hat from here and bring in these elements. So now I've done a bit of work here. Uh, I think this is quite long enough for an introduction. So we're, we're just going to jump straight into here. Now I'm just copying blocks. I'm going to leave this line. I might add a sort of vocal chopper or something there, but I'm going to add a couple of slots and probably four. That will be the main break. take things away and then we'll bring it down so I'm just going to remove the drums and, and then I'm thinking we could bring in some of these higher elements now in our impact sound I'm going to add a bunch of off commands so this is really handy. Actually, we'll do cut commands. When we are working and we want instruments to cut out, I like referring to this line because I know that in the song mode, oops, in the song mode, all these have cut commands. So where I had an issue, this will keep playing through and then when it go into a no note, I can hear that to cut out what I'm trying to do. Like that. So it's really useful technique. Uh, well, their hi hats don't need to worry about cutting them out. And now that we've done that, I'm going to bring in our second part. So I've noticed a bit of an issue in this track and it's coming from these two bass lines here because it's repeating four times and you can definitely hear it. So what I might do is quickly jump into here and edit the last section of this bass line. So I've got it set to there. Something like that. So if we go up compared to where were we there I think that's cool and then we're going to go into record and we're going to copy that baseline and we'll paste it cool so it's sort of breaking up the pattern and I might do a little bit more tweaking to get this feeling a little bit more flowy uh, we've got a middle section and then we have our build up again now we're back and I've been going through the song and I've had a listen and I'm really enjoying what's going on but I want to work on these transition bits and this is where I came into a bit of issue because when I was recording this tutorial I had a bit of an accident and my microphone died on me and I got this really cool weird sample. So I'm going to throw that in there just because it was a bit of a pain to replace my microphone. So. Cool. So we've got a nice little transition and now I'm going to sprinkle in those nice little impacts and risers. So this is where you really look for any space that you can fill up and that's a big motto with trackers is if you've got any gaps definitely fill them up. So I'm going to use that one and I want to head to the second bar here and I'm going to add that impact sound we did with this one and and for my second break and with that being said here's what we've got so far
Now, I had a lot of fun making that one and it was a bit sad that the microphone died halfway through. I do apologize for that bit of an audio issue halfway through. I have a new one now so I can record a whole bunch more like this and I did manage to capture a bit of its soul before it passed on. So that was something I really enjoyed. Now, drum and bass, it's such a broad area and I feel this tutorial scratched the surface even though it's quite long. Uh, I definitely had my way of doing things you definitely have your way of doing things. So definitely experiment with the tracker. See what you can do, like different grooves, different drums, different bass lines, different samples. Like really you can start exploring and trying out some of the techniques in here and you're gonna create something really special. So definitely give it a shot. Now, there was a lot to cover with the Polyan tracker in this one. And if you found any of this useful, definitely give it that thumbs up because it really does help the algorithm point this to other people. And I will leave the links below to my sample pack. Plus I did release the album with the tracker files there as well. So you can pick them up and pull them apart and see how I did things. And you might find some inspiration in there as well. So all in all, I hope you enjoyed this one and I do look forward to seeing you next time.